Here we go. This is the video that everybody's been asking me for, Super Trickler versus Auto Trickler. Now, a couple things up front. This is not going to be which one's best because I'll be honest, I really like both of them. I just like them for different reasons and I think that's gonna compel people to choose one or the other. This is not definitely a case of, you know, one just blows away the other. They just do things differently and I think that's gonna be attractive to different people for different reasons. Second thing. Everything you see I paid for. I bought the scales, bought the Super Trickler, bought my Auto Trickler, bought the Ingenuity. Everything here has been paid for. Just getting that out of the way. You guys know I always try to be as transparent as I possibly can. Uh, but in this case, everything has been paid for. Uh, no discounts, no nothing. So uh, let's talk about just starting off the form factor of the two. Super Trickler, uh, some people have you know made different nicknames for it but the fact of the matter is that it's a very nice enclosed unit and um, you know while it looks like a kitchen appliance I think that is sort of the attractiveness that a lot of people find in it um, it looks like a finished product and I and I think a lot of people are drawn to the the fit and finish of it um, it's very well made it's very well assembled um, I really like the design of it and I like how it has the built-in enclosure which I'm going to show you more about the Platin and why it's designed the way it is. Um, the V3 that I have here, obviously an older design, you know, you've got your powder measure on top, you've got a trickler on the side, whether it's the Ingenuity Precision or the regular trickler uh, that it comes with, you know, it's going to occupy a lot more real estate over here. The one I don't have right now is the V4 Auto Trickler. And to be fair, the V4 is going to be a much closer comparison to the Super Trickler because for one, the form factor is about the same. It's gonna sit on top of here. It doesn't occupy any additional real estate. It's just a hair taller than the Super Trickler. So for all intents and purposes, the V4 and the Super Trickler, same amount of space on your bench, you know, kind of an all-in-one form factor. Uh, the real difference is that the Super Trickler has it all enclosed. The even the V4, it's more of an exposed design. You see the motors, you see you know the functioning tubes and stuff like that. It's not a big deal. Just telling you the aesthetics of the two. Uh, operationally, the V4 and the V3 operate off of the Auto Trickler app. Uh, it's a very straightforward thing. You connect to your scale through Bluetooth. You punch in your weight. You hit go. It's going to drop on a V3 system. The only adjustment is the slider on the back of the scale. On a V4, there are several adjustments on the app screen itself that you can go into to affect the large tube and the small tube and, and the trickle and stuff like that. Um, so the V4 definitely has more adjustment in it to allow user customization than the V3. And the Super Trickler is an all-in-one screen. So uh, when you turn it on, it's actually going to turn on the scale as well. All of your scale functions are driven through the screen here. So calibration and other things like that you do through the screen up here. The big difference between something like the Super Trickler and your Auto Trickler is that uh, the primary operation being on the screen versus an app is probably something that may or may not be a decision for you. So I'm going to talk about that for a minute. With an app, the advantage is that uh, it's on your phone, you have it, if, if Auto Trickler makes an update to the software, it is typically pushed right to your phone through an update. So if you have Android or if you have Apple, it's going to go right into it. And, and if there's a tweak to the system, you may not even know that there was an update to the actual system. Uh, but it also means you don't have to be aware of any updates in order for the updates to take effect. So that's a good thing. With Super Trickler, you have, and I'm going to show you on this unit here, there's a little SD card, little micro SD right here. And this does have to be inserted because it has controlling uh, software on it. Uh, but uh, when they do updates, whether it's uh, firmwares and stuff like that, uh, you would uh, get some kind of notification from them. Uh, that part's still being worked out right now. Uh, there's a Facebook users group that's notifying people if there's a change. I'm sure in the future they're going to have some different push systems, whether it's an email to all the users or anybody that's registered their unit or whatever it is. But you would get a notification. You simply drag the firmware onto the disk. It takes two seconds. You insert it and the system does everything for you. It, it is an incredibly simple system. Uh, I'm part of some beta testing on different firmwares and I can tell you it's, it's just a matter of literally inserting it, hitting go, it does all of the rest. So why would you care? 
Like, why do you care about a touch screen versus an app? Well, talking to different people, trying to get a feel for it, here's some of the thoughts that people have had. Uh, one, with an app, you are tied or tethered to some sort of a device, whether it's an old phone you have sitting around, your good phone, a tablet, uh, whatever it is, you do need something to operate it. And in the event that there was a problem with the app, maybe Apple or Google makes changes to their, their operating system and for whatever reason the app isn't updated. Uh, you know, I've had this happen with other brands. Uh, Adam has always been very good about keeping up, so this is not a reflection on him, uh, but Apple does some weird things sometimes and uh, you know, it could cause the app to be non-responsive. Now, again, that hasn't happened. I don't expect it to happen, but it's a concern people have raised when I've talked to them. If something happens to your phone or you don't have the app, you obviously can't use the auto trickler. The super trickler, being that it's all enclosed here, you always have functionality. So even if the company went out of business, suddenly they fold up, they go away, and you never hear from them again, guess what? You still have a functioning unit that doesn't require any updating or you know keeping up with operating systems on whatever your tablet or phone is. So that's kind of something to weigh in there. Um, some people said, well, I actually prefer to have it on the phone. I like having the updates there. Some people I've talked to said, well, I like the idea of having it all enclosed because then I know even five or 10 or 20 years down the line, this thing's still going to function the way that it's supposed to. So there's a trade-off just in the pure function of it. So let's look at loading powder into the two systems. Auto Trickler, whether it's the V3, V4, V2, whatever you have, has an exposed powder column. Uh, very similar to any of the RCBS, uh, Hornady, Frankfurt Arsenal, like anybody that makes a system pretty much has some kind of a clear tube so that you can get a read on how much powder is left. One thing you'll know about the Super Trickler, I can't see how much powder is in there. Now, they do have a rather large, and uh, again, I'm gonna use this one as a demonstration. They do have a rather large hole on top. Uh, you know, I can get about three fingers in the hole and you can see into it real well. And the nice thing is, if you can see in there, then that's all you need because if there's powder then you're good if there isn't then you're getting low and uh, the reason I say that is is people kind of assume well maybe there's like little hidey holes or I can't see all the powder it's a very clear-cut funnel in here so if you can see the powder then you're good if you can't you probably ought to refill it so it's very easy to look down inside of it uh, the unit itself comes with a black funnel that sits on top to help aid when you need to dump powder in I will say that there is a gentleman on Accurate Shooter who was kind enough to sell, send me uh, some 3D printed stuff that he's already made. He's got this really cool funnel that goes on top. Uh, it has a plug, so if I want to leave powder in there, you can plug it up. Uh, he's also made a couple other accessories, and I'll show you guys, but he made a handle and he made a new cup and some stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, just in all fairness to him, um, he's a really nice guy and he does really good work. His name's... Uh, Lone Harvey on Accurate Shooter, O-L-L-O-A-N-H-A-R-V-E-Y, and you can contact him if you need anything like this made. But just like the Auto Trickler has had lots of accessories made for it by other companies, Super Trickler, you can see, already has things being made for it. Um, I do think this funnel is great. Uh, the regular funnel works fine. Uh, I actually went through a couple different, I went to the Dollar Tree and just picked up a white funnel because, I don't know, I just wanted it to be white since the unit's pretty much all white. Uh, but uh, again, he sent me this and, and I really like it. So filling the two units, I don't typically pour straight out of, out of a jug because this is an eight pounder. And once it gets above shoulder level, I risk dumping stuff because I've got little shakes and whatnot. But anyway, we're just gonna dump powder in there and we're going to dump powder in here. And of course, because I'm using the Ingenuity Precision, we're gonna put some powder in the trickler there and the rest goes back in. All right, so now they all have powder. Okie dokie. One little kernel fell out and that's gonna happen once in a while. So let's look at how the scales dispense their powder. With the uh, auto trickler, you have the bulk coming out of the funnel here and, and on a V4, you've got a large tube and then a small tube. So. Um, either way, you're going to have a large, a large amount and then a trickle of some kind coming out on the, v, on the V4 or the V3 here. On the Super Trickler, very similar. You have a large tube and a small tube. Large is going to do the bulk throw. The small tube is going to do all your other things like fine, slow, pulse, 
Um, it can operate in different functions. So it can just simply vibrate constantly. You can pulse it. You can do different things with it to affect how the powder comes out. And that, that is really important because it's, uh, it lets you tailor it. Like there's some really big powders, like some of the big reloaders and some of the Vitavores and like, you know, um, BMG 50 and stuff like that, where they, they just meter a lot differently. Or you might have something like a ball powder uh, that is going to meter completely differently than any kind of extruded powder. So functionally, they're all gonna work on the same concept. Drop a bunch of powder, throw some more powder in, uh, you know, at a rate until you get close to your target and then trickle to your target. So most of these are going to work in some kind of a three-stage system that way. That's what Auto Trickler does and that is what Super Trickler does. I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, this. Now I always prime uh, my Auto Trickler just to get that filled on a V4. Uh, you can prime the big tube, it's not totally necessary, but um, it is functional. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and run a, um, we're just gonna go ahead and run one just to kind of get the tubes primed a little bit here. And it's mainly the small vibration tube that takes a second to get primed up. Um, so we're gonna let that go for a second, but functionally they're about the same uh, in terms of, again, the three stage functions. And all right, so we've got powder coming out. Okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, we've got cup on, it's ready to go. We've got a cup in here. I'm gonna go ahead and power this up and make sure that my phone is connected because the main thing everybody's asking about is speed. And I'm as guilty as anybody, speed matters to me. Uh, if I'm loading three, four, five, six hundred rounds for a big match, um, you know, every little bit kind of adds up. But before I get started, and this goes for no matter whether you're using an auto trickler or a super trickler, but super trickler did something really smart. And I'd like to give a big shout out to um, uh, this girl, Haley, um, uh, Haley Hubble, uh, who is a friend of friend of mine. And she was kind enough to print out an entire instruction manual for me. Um, so that's really nice. And my buddy's big into the super tricklers as well. So uh, he actually got his just a little sooner. Uh, she saw that he really needed a printed out one, printed one for him, and then printed one out for me, and I thought that was really nice. So, um, But in here, they have a nice little section on the trade-offs between speed and failures. And this is something that gets talked about a lot. And I think this is where people get really hung up. They want a system that is just stupid fast, and they want it to be perfect. And look, that's just not going to happen. Like You just can't meter powder in two or three seconds and expect it to be perfect. There's going to be time trade-offs. And this gives a really good example, and I'll just kind of read it to you in case you don't have this manual handy, which is um, if you were to do 100 charges with zero failures, which look, I can tune both of these to be absolutely perfect every single time they throw, uh, but it does add time. And if you were to make those charge weights take 20 seconds, okay, your total time would be about 33 minutes. Now, if you could cut that time to six seconds, but have a 10% error rate, right? Which sounds like a lot, you know, one out of 10 charges being wrong, you would actually shave your time uh, down to uh, 11 minutes, right? So you'd be saving 22 minutes if you accept a 10% error rate. And if you split the difference uh, and go to like a 10 second time, then you would be looking at 18 minutes, or uh, sorry, you'd be looking at, uh, yeah, 18 minutes, which would still be saving you 15 minutes of drop time. So I, I think the notion of like, oh, I need to get this thing as perfect as I can, you've, you've got to be willing to let it go. And I, I let it go a long time ago, uh, even before the V4 was out, I was willing to push my unit as fast as possible, knowing that I'd be throwing back some percentage of throws and it just doesn't irritate me. Like I just, that part doesn't bother me. So, um, you know, your mileage is gonna vary on that. It's a very personal choice. Um, you know, you're gonna have to make a decision on, on what's important to you. But, uh, you know, that's what matters to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and put 56.4 on here. We're gonna run a charge and we're gonna run a charge and then I'm gonna do them head to head here and show you. I just wanna get both of these running. So those finished almost identically. All right, so we're gonna turn on auto here. This one's automatically on auto. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw. And 
here we go. Oh, I had a double throw in there. This one got just a little behind, but anyway, you can see there. So that was 10 seconds. This was just a hair faster on that one. All right, here we go. So we put the cup on at the same time, allowing for the system to work the way it wanted to work. Okay, so we're done here in 11 seconds. This one finished almost exactly the same. And I'll say this is about the average. I, I get somewhere between eight and 10 seconds on each unit. It, six to one, half dozen to the other sometimes. Auto trickler, I'm super familiar with. I can, I would say that my, my auto trickler is running at, you know, 99%, 99 plus percent efficiency. The super trickler is one of those things where I am still, you know, figuring out all the screens, figuring out exactly how to get all everything to match. You know, and in all fairness, that one took a little bit longer. And I'm not gonna beat this, you know, too hard because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I can affect these in a lot of different ways to make it look good on camera. I'm just trying to tell you, this is how I run it and this is how I'm running it. I'm not playing any games with the systems here. So that one just finished. You know, this one I still need to work on a little bit, but this is how I'm dropping powder right now. So uh, this one, like I said, I've been in the eight to 10 second ballpark for the most part, um, it's just kind of the way it is. So let's turn off the auto so we don't actually throw and we're gonna turn off the auto trickler. Uh, so uh, that gives you a good idea with that. Now let's talk about kind of fundamentally where each one is going. Now the auto trickler, kind of like we talked about, it, it's a great thrower. Like I don't have anything against it. I think it fits a lot of people's needs really, really well. The V3 is just for pure speed. You still, it's not, a, it's not the best unit for doing like powder tests where you have to do ladder tests and keep bumping up charge weights because you have to make manual adjustments. If you switch powders, um, you know, it's, it's a process to, you know, readjust how much the coarse drop is or the bulk drop. Uh, but if you have a V4, you know, it's made for very easily switching powders and stuff like that. Uh, so is the Super Trickler. So uh, both of them will auto adjust very quickly to different powders that are in there. One of the big differences, however, is that the V4 and the V3 for that matter, don't have any way to save any of your previous powder charges. So you have to typically keep some kind of a log book, um, you know, where you were set, maybe what your calibrations were like on a V4. On a V3, you might make some notes of where, where the screw was. Um, and so both of those uh, on the auto trickler side do require some manual intervention into some kind of a logbook if you're doing a bunch of different cartridges. Super trickler has, uh, you know, they call it near infinite. Uh, I can only guess that it means they have enough memory in here that they can't conceivably think of somebody saving enough cartridge data to exceed that, that amount, but obviously there will be some cap on it. But you can literally go in here and save by powder, by cartridge, you know, you you get to customize like a header and then a subheader. And I mean, you can have all these different kind of categories to save within. So it gives you a lot of power to, to you know, really customize all of that. And you can export a lot of it into Excel files so that if you want to put that data into some kind of a spreadsheet, uh, you can definitely do that. You can pull out your good throw, bad throw data. You can throw you know, you can get a, an exact list of all your charge weights. Like there's a lot of data that you can pull out of here if that's something that's important to you. The Super Trickler also has a built-in ladder testing program so that you tell it what the charge weight is, how much to step up each charge weight and how many throws per charge weight. And let's say I wanna go from 50 to 51 and I wanna do five charges. Well, I can put in 50 uh, to start and then 10th of a grain increments and five charges. Now. If it sees that a throw is bad, so maybe the first throw is 50, you know, 50.4, and it's going to say, okay, you're, you know, you're a, a, a kernel over, uh, it doesn't count that. It's only going to count the charges that are good before it moves on to the next charge weight, but it does help keep you on track, uh, and it does tell you what charge weight is being thrown at that time. 
But that way, if you've got your, you know, your brass lined out, you literally just keep throwing and you just keep going in an order and you don't have to worry about, oh, I forgot to bump it up on that one. Oh, shoot, was, you know, was the first one of the next charge weight. You know, like I've done that where, you know, I've been at 50 and then forgot to go to 50.1 and then, you know, maybe one or two charges and I have to dump them out, weigh them again, you know, stuff like that. Uh, this will definitely keep you on, on track for sure uh, with that. Uh, they also have plans to expand. So the unit itself has, this is going to be your serial port to the scale. This is an expansion port and that is going to be used for future projects. Like they've already started working on what they call the super filler, which is a 200 piece of brass auto filling station. Uh, again, it will know if there's a good charge or bad charge, fill your case. It'll have a, a collection bin for bad charges. Uh, if it needs to dump off a charge, uh, but it will autofill. They are also working on um, integrating like a, a bullet feeder system for uh, sorting bullets. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to think what else they told me. There's a bunch of stuff that they've been working on. But the the fundamental thing with Super Trickler was not to you know directly compete with anything else, whether it was RCBS or Auto Trickler, whoever. They really wanted to co uh, create a complete system for reloaders and so if that means auto filling sorting things um, they wanted this to be able to be kind of the the brain of it so that they could have all of these different add-ons to assist the reloader in things that they need to do and i think that's a pretty cool feature in it i think it will also and i don't know how it's going to work but you know there's always the possibility that people are going to figure out how to build their own accessories for this um, i have no idea how accessible any of the code is uh, and I don't know if they're ever going to open up any of the code for general purpose use, but uh, you know, it would be really cool just with all the 3D printing and people out there that like to tinker. Uh, it would be cool if down the line there was some functionality that let you, you know, have some basic functions in here to do something on your own. Um, you know, I don't know, but, but the fact that this is an onboard computer with the expansion ports really gives you a lot of possibilities. Um, even if it's just from the manufacturer. Uh, aside from that, uh, emptying powder, that's another question that comes up. Uh, with my V3, for instance, it's pretty straightforward. A V4, you know, you're going to, uh, you know, simply close the gate just like you would here on your powder. Uh, in this particular case, I'm dropping the extra powder that's inside the measure into a cup. Uh, I'm then going to dump my powder out, which, you know, is easy enough. And then I'm going to pull my trickler powder and the cup powder. And on a V4, everything's inside the tubes and a little holder on the back. You would simply dump it out the back, blow out the two tubes, make sure they're empty, you're good to go. So I am going to dump my powder back in here real quick. And I'm going to show you uh, both on a second unit and then on the actual unit, what is being done and what they've done. So if you're familiar with the V4, uh, the way his gate system works, if the gates open, it won't go back on to the V4. So it prevents you from um, having any powder spillage. Super Trickler has done something similar with their bottom gate here. So this is the emptying gate. When the gate is open, it blocks the uh, actual platen and prevents it from going down onto the scale. So you physically can't use the, even if it's open just the tiniest amount, which still technically blocks everything, they have an extra amount of coverage. But even if it's open, you know, the slightest amount, it won't go over the platen. And so you have to make sure that that's closed before it goes on. So how do we empty this? Well, uh, this is all I do. Uh, I just grab my same cup. I'm going to put it over I'm going to make sure that the hole is lined up and we're just going to dump the powder in here, which I know you may or may not be able to see right now. And then once that powder's out, I just close it up. I just give it a couple little shakes to get whatever else is in the tubes and dump it out and then we are good to go here, okay? Now it is completely empty and ready for you to do whatever else you need. That does bring me to the actual scale system and, and kind of some of the differences there which is, if you're familiar with the Auto Trickler, it utilizes uh, the A and D platen, which is this setup system right here. You know, so that's this right here. Uh, it is large, you know, it's, it's what comes with the scale, but it does allow for a lot of different cups to be used. And 
Uh, as a result, there's people that have made, you know, 3D printed cups and custom cups. Area 419 makes a cup, all kinds of different stuff like that. Um, I am going to put some extra powder back in here because I want to show you guys something. But, um, you know, there are a lot of cup choices because you have a large field. The downside is you have a large surface area that can be impacted by any kind of, you know, like the breezeway covers a lot of it, but you still have the potential to affect uh, the scale. And, uh, you know, whether it's uh, ambient air blowing on it, whatever it is. So what Super Trickler did is they are using, uh, you remove this entire platen system and this is their entire platen. Now it will perfectly fit their powder cup, okay? And the rest of the scale mechanism is covered by the plastic. So if a, if a kernel drops or something, there is a little bit of a gap around the platen that will let the kernel fall through. Every once in a while, you know, you might, when you're dumping powder or something, there might be a few kernels to clean out. But because there's nothing under there to be affected, if there are kernels down there, it doesn't affect your scale in any way. Which brings up the cup. Now, people looked at the cup and they said, wow, that looks really small. Um, there's no way that's going to work for me and this and that. Keep in mind, Auto Trickler ships with a sh basically a, a shot glass uh, looking thing. Um, and it holds plenty of powder. This is no different. I think some of us have gotten spoiled, myself included, with uh, big old cups like this. Uh, but just to show you, I'm going to weigh out, uh, you know, roughly, I don't even know what a big charge would be for like 50 BMG or something, but let's say 250 grains, 270. So here's 270 grains of powder. Okay. And it easily fits in this cup with some room to spare. So I don't know how much more than 270 grains of powder you'd need in a single throw, but uh, if you do for some reason, just know that you can get to at least 270, probably 300 or a little bit more. Uh, the handle is definitely a little bit shorter. Um, I do have slight shakes and, and getting it in there uh, since I, it's kind of a blind shot for me because I don't have it up on a, on a shelf. Uh, you know, I have found that my hand has hit the unit once in a while. Uh, that same gentleman, Lone Harvey, also makes this little adapter that fits onto the cup. Uh, I have been using this 100% of the time now, and that prevents me from having any of the mistakes that I was having. So that works great for me. So that's, uh, that's the scales. That's the actual mechanisms. Uh, some of the philosophies of kind of what the units do and how they work. Uh, I am going to be doing some Super Trickler specific videos on the programming side because it's going to take some time to show how all of the features interact with each other. And I really want to make sure that when I do that, I can really show you guys how if you have one of these or end up with one of them, that, uh, that you're able to at least feel like you are affecting change. So that brings up the last thing, which is the artificial intelligence of the Super Trickler. So we've kind of seen this before with some other systems where it says that like powder optimization and flow rates and stuff like that. Um, and all of those are working towards the same goal, which is taking your powder and delivering it the most efficient way into the cup, both for accuracy and speed. What Super Trickler does is it has uh, within, within the profile, it has a self-learning mode. Uh, they don't necessarily call it AI in here, but it's a self-learning mode, which has uh, bulk thresholds, fine thresholds, pulse, um, you know, some acceptance within like the learning mode. And the important thing to remember with the self-learning, at least at this point, is that it's really powerful, but it's not going to uh, like fine tune a charge. The fine tuning is still a manual process because there's different ways to affect that. But what the AI from what I have found so far does a really good job of is it, it lets you put in a powder, put in a charge weight, hit go, and within a few charges, it gets you really, really close to the right proportions of bulk, fine, and pulse. And then you can turn off the, the um, self-learning, and then you can tweak around with it. Okay, I wanna decrease the, the amount of powder in air, and I wanna you know, increase the pulse rate and the vibration, and I wanna do all these things uh, you know, for my particular need. And I've gotten really good with that so far and, and really kind of enjoy it now. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It, it was not a, an instantly gratifying experience for me. I think I went into it expecting the AI to be perfect, you know, like, oh, it's going to just drill down my load and within 20 charges, it's going to be running perfect. 
It just doesn't do that. It got me really, really close, and you can technically leave the self-learning on, and at some point, once it has done enough self-learning, it will turn itself off when it says, okay, we think we've optimized it, um, but I will just tell you that at that point, you can still go in and fiddle with it if you want. You don't have to. Like, it's not totally necessary. It still does a fine job uh, on the self-learning, but it does give you the, the ability to do that. Uh, as far as what it comes with, the Super Trickler is going to come with the unit, a plug, a cup. Uh, it does come with a little cleaning brush. And um, I think that's everything. Yeah, I think that's everything that it comes with. And the funnel, obviously. I showed you guys the, the funnel here. So it's going to come with all of that. So it comes with everything you need to get rolling. It does have an internal database of powders. So um, if I go in here and I go to select powder. Um, I can actually uh, select from Accurate, ADI, Alliant, BNP, Hodgdon, IMR, Lovex, Norma, Ramshot. I mean, there's there's more powders than I even knew existed in here. Winchester, Vitavori, everything. Um, and, and the pro powder profiles are pretty good. And again, as they do updates, they're going to keep improving those powder, powder profiles. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do in here. I, I, I know that doesn't make it easy for a video like this because I really want to show like all the little functions, but it would just take too long on this video. So my, my main goal with this is just to show you how the two systems function, you know, let you decide, hey, I've got an auto trickler, I'm fine sticking with it, it looks like it fits my needs, or hey, um, you know, I wanna go with the super trickler, I think it's gonna fit my needs. Both are fantastic units. I, I honestly don't have like an allegiance to either one. I've helped both with beta stuff. Um, I think they're both great companies and I will tell you customer service wise, even before I was doing any kind of beta testing uh, with Super Trickler, their customer service was fantastic. And Adam has always been great with his customer service. So, um, you know, that's a plus. I think we're all too used to some of the larger corporate companies that, um, you know, are kind of hit or miss sometimes. Uh, but both of these are, you know, really seem to be grounded in uh, owners that care about the user and the product uh, succeeding. So I think that's really great too. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope this has helped. If you have any questions or if there's something that I haven't covered and you want to, you know, have me put something through its paces, whether it's the Auto Trickler or the Super Trickler, uh, feel free to hit me up in the comments below. Uh, more Super Trickler videos to come in the next week or two. And uh, we'll go from there. Thanks as always, guys. You have a good one. We'll talk later.